Hey guys, welcome to another Anime Kingdom discussion and review. This one is on Akamiga Kill episode 14. So the episode starts off with the from the last episode where S Death found Tatsumi. And it's pretty much oh my gosh, I swear. She's so cute when she blushes and stuff, but their moment gets ruined. Tatsumi obviously is like, oh my gosh, I wish this was a dream, you know, but yeah, the moment gets ruined when this that hooded guy that can control those danger beasts appears and all of a sudden he sends he like teleports Tatsumi and S Death to an island somewhere. At first Tatsumi asks S Death, you know, will you hit me? To which <laughs> she's like to think you had such a fetish <laughs> we really are meant for each other, you know? And <laughs> Tatsumi's like, No <laughs> What he meant was, you know, cause to see if they're you know, you know, pinch me to see if you're dreaming kind of thing. To which he gets ready, you know, for her to hit her. He closes his eyes and stuff, and all of a sudden, she kisses him. Tatsumi, you are such a lucky guy. Come on. Just. Ah. <laughs> so, after that, it seems that the guy's imperial arm transported them there. And they talk about a little bit, you know, about, like, because at first, Tatsumi's like, he can do that? To which she says, you know, there are some imperial arms that can manipulate time and space using secrets from the lost country or something i'm just like damn that seems kind of overpowered and what lost country is this i want to hear more about this lost country that sounds interesting so after that s death makes a pillar of ice you know straight up so they can see around and they're completely surrounded by water so yeah they're on some island somewhere no land to be seen anywhere um, after that, these two huge danger beasts appear. They're pretty much, they look just like the one, you know, how Dr. Stylish looked when he injected himself with that thing. So it has that little person on the big person. And they pretty much fight with, um, we see how strong S-Death is. Tatsumi impressing her a little too by killing one. And then she kills the other. And yeah that's pretty much that part after that they then go out and explore the whole island together pretty much a date like she said before and it's so cute them together after that s death then figures out that they are on a deserted island to the far southeast of the capital and <laughs> this next part just cr like oh man she basically says you know they're basically the only ones there and asks, you know, what does he want to do? It's his, it's his destiny. Then he is given three choices, like it's a visual novel or something. And the first choice is living here together a bit doesn't seem so bad. The next one is, no matter what, we must return to the capital and live together there. And then the third choice is, hold me please. To which he's like, ah, this really isn't a choice. And I'm just like, Tatsumi, I hate you. Come on. Those are great choices. Oh, man. Forget the capital. Forget Night Raid. Live with her there on the island together. <laughs> uh, then after that, they go back to where they were first teleported. And there's that purple glowing thing. And it turns out that, you know, um, he can't hold it for that long. So they, have to, they stay there and it, it'll reopen later. And they should be able to get back kind of thing. Then we get some backstory on Tatsumi about how a guy from the, who was retired from the military came to his village and that's how he learned to use a sword um, become a blacksmith you know learn how to smelt what we make weapons and a whole bunch of you know, he was also a martial artist so he learned martial arts from him and stuff after that Tatsumi thinks oh you know he can he can get some info on S death and you know still he could try and convince her to join you know with him still yet it's because it's better on you know her being on their side after that we learn of Esther's story which is she's from the northern border and was a chief's daughter in the Palata's clan which was a, a race of hunters that target danger beasts and we then learn where she got that mentality about you know the weak dying and stuff and that's from her father which pretty much you even went as far as saying at this one point that her mother was weak since she died to a danger beast and you know she she was weaker so that's why it happened I'm just like damn you don't teach a kid that kind of stuff jeez 
One day, a northern tribe crossed the border and attacked everyone while she was gone, including her father, who said before he died, this is what he said, as you can see, we were weaker, so we lost. It can't be helped. Really? No, that's messed up. No wonder she thinks like that. And at first, Tatsumi's like, oh, so that's why, you know, she, how she was, you know, burying people in the north and stuff, you know, killing all of them. That's why she did that. To which she says, no, it did. It wouldn't matter if, about all of that. She would have done it either way. I was like, uh, okay. So after that, it seems she continued to hunt danger beasts on her own, but prey became scarce, and that's when she joined the military, which was pretty simple. It was just changing from killing danger hunting uh hunting beasts to hunting humans after that we learn of Eth's death's imperial arm because he asks can he see it tatsumi asks if he can see it to which she grabs his hand and touches him you know where there's a mark over here and it turns out she got that mark on her chest because when she was with the minister she wasn't compatible with any of the um imperial arms that they had and then she saw this urn in the back which is called demon's extract which is from this like high level which is the blood a lifeblood of the of a high level danger beast that can control ice to which he's you know a bunch of people tried but they all went crazy from it so you know she decides she feels that like it's calling to her she'll be able to do it so she goes and drinks the whole thing <laughs> He said a glass is good enough, but she says, you know, she'll be stronger or something, and she knows that she'll be compatible. So she drinks the whole thing. All of a sudden, she falls on her knees, and there's all these crazy urges and crazy things going in her mind. And she's like, oh, this is why, you know, they went crazy. But she's just really strong, and she's she's not the one to be dominated. She's the one to dominate. And, yeah, that's where she got her ability to control ice. And, yeah. After hearing all that, he was pretty much convinced that he could not change her since it wasn't revenge or the demon extract, which would have made more sense and he could think maybe it could change it from there. But it's just who she is. She is, you know, crazy like that. And he knows he can't change her. So after that, we then see the hooded guy and it turns out that hooded guy is the minister's son plot twist so we heard about the you know the son before but he obviously wants to overcome his father you know and stuff like that after that we then see a stingray thing appear behind them so Eth death goes to you know tame it because that's their other plan to fly back instead but then the circle reopens and Tatsumi's like oh here finally his chance to escape you know and you know there's no way he can convince her so he's just gonna leave but he feels bad because she did help him survive and she was with him the whole way on the island. So he war pretty much warns her before, like, I'm going to go, oh, the portal's here. I'm going to go in first. You know, and she's like, wait. And he goes in, then she goes in after, but Tatsumi is gone. She can't find him. She thinks, did he run away already? Or did it send him somewhere else? But it's actually Tatsumi's behind a rock, invisible. And of course, you know, he can't hide his presence, so he's just not going to move. He has, has to, you know blasted it out to which she knows that you know third time will be the same they'll meet again she obviously still really does love him but Tatsumi knows for the next time they will meet again but it will be as enemies and I'm just like man there goes my Tatsumi ex as death you know <sighs> I just gotta go read some fan fiction when there is <laughs> But yeah, I give the episode 7 out of 10. It was a nice little Tatsumi S. Death episode. We learned a lot about S. Death and, you know, like her childhood and how she got her Imperial arm and stuff. So I liked the episode. It was, it was interesting, a lot of things to learn. And of course, Tatsumi finally realizing that there is no way to change her and convince her to go to their side instead. And as always, guys, this is a discussion, so comment below what you guys thought if you want. If you have any questions, comment down below as well. And, you know, give the video a like and tell your friends. And if you haven't yet, subscribe. Helps, guys. Until next time, hope you guys enjoyed this Anime Kingdom discussion and review. See ya.